Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Europe. In this technical hands-on movie, we're going to look at partition mobility that's now available on the Power 6 machines. This is where we can get a logical partition to move from one machine to another machine. These logical partitions can be running the latest copy of AX 5.3, AIX 6 or one of the Linux on Power distributions. This is the configuration of the machines that we're going to use in this demonstration. On the right hand side we have a TS4700 supplying us with a LUN via the SAN switch. This LUN is available to the virtual I.O. server on both machines. And the virtual I.O. server will present this as a virtual disk to the logical partitions that it's hosting. In this case we have a partition called P01 and it's running AX 5.3 maintenance level 7. The virtual I.O. server is also presenting this logical partition with a virtual network. So P01 has a virtual disk and a virtual network to do all its I.O. to and from via the virtual I.O. server. We have a hardware management console that's connected to these two machines. The HMC is used to control the actual machine, to control the configuration of the logical partitions and the virtual I.O. servers. And I'm actually using my ThinkPad to access the HMC remotely. So here we have the HMC for my two Power 6 machines. I've clicked over here the custom groups and all partitions, so I've got all the partitions on these two machines, but I've then selected a um, start with filter here, so I'm only displaying the logical partitions that start with the word demo. Uh, that eliminates the other 20 or so logical partitions we have on this machine, because these are the ones I want to concentrate on for this demonstration. Now we have two VIO servers, VIOS 00 and VIOS 04 on these two different machines. This is the server name here. We call them DAI and NAG and uh, the 8F and the 7F are part of the serial number to make sure we understand which machine we're on. We're also running this logical partition here called P01 which is the one we're going to move between the two machines. At the moment it's on this machine called NAG7F. I've already selected this logical partition so we got the menus up in here and so we can go for operations mobility migrate that will give us up a series of panels that we'll work through to decide what we actually want to do first thing it says are you really sure that this is the right partition you want to migrate so we're on the NAG7F machine and it's the logical partition here called demo P01 that's what we want to do, and we want to do a, an active live migration, so we'll select next. Now it says when we get to the target machine, it wants to create a new profile for this logical partition, which is going to be defined as having the resources as it actually moved, rather than as it started, because we may have changed things along the way. So let's call this uh, new partition just demo to give it a name. Now it's selecting, well, where do we want this partition to go? We've only got two Power 6 machines, so it has to be the other machine. If we had lots of Power 6 machines, then we'd have a list in here. We'd have to select which machine we want to go to. Next, it's now doing the validation. It knows the source and target machine. It's going to make sure that when it gets to the target machine, it can find the same virtual Ethernet and the same SAN connections so that our logical partition will work when it arrives. Next though it's telling us here that which move a service partition do we actually want to use. When we actually do the move one of the VIO servers on the source and one on the target machine will be used to actually move the memory between the machines and this is called the move a service partitions. Now in this simple scenario here we only have one VIOS server on each machine so it's obvious we have to select those. If we had more than one VIO service on each of the 
source or target machine then we could select which combination we want to use as the source and destination mover service. Next it's selecting here that when we arrive on the new machine that which VIO service do we want to connect to the virtual LAN for us. And again in this case we've only got one VIO server but it, we may have various options in here. Now it's doing the same thing for the virtual SCSI. Again we've only got one VIO server so it's obvious we have to use that one. But again we could select which VIO server we want to provide the virtual SCSI connections. When we arrive on the target machine we have to select which shared CPU pool do we actually want to belong to. This one has the default and it also has a, a particular detailed one called shared pool 001. But I want to go into the default pool when we arrive, so I'll select that and carry on. There's a sanity check here that says if this move takes longer than, in this case, five minutes, then it will back out and uh, stop the migration. Well, we expect it to take a lot less than that, so five minutes is fine in this case. And we'll select next. This is the summary page that tells us, uh, let's uh, have a double check to see if we got all the details right, and we have, so we'll just do a finish and it actually starts the move now. I want to bring up a little application so we can actually run something on the machine while we're actually doing this move. This little application here is telling us that we're on the 7F machine and this will change and it will change colour when we actually get to the target as well. And we've already seen here that this we're moving from this one, it's created a partition up here with the same name on the target machine. They're in the migrating state here. So we've started it up and we have to take the memory from the target, uh, from the source to the target. Now we're at uh, just over 20% uh, complete. This is when we actually start doing the memory move. So we'll do the memory move, then it'll do it a couple of extra times to reduce the amount of difference in the memory pages between the machines. And then we've done the actual take over there, the application has worked out that it's actually running on the other machine, the 8F machine, so we're now actually running on the target machine and we'll get to 98% and the final 2% is removing this partition from the source machine so we don't leave uh, lots of copies of the logical partition around as we move it around different machines we clean up as we go this will just take a, a few seconds because it has to disconnect this logical partition from the VIO server and uh, dismantle the connections. There we go, 100%, we're 100% complete. And we'll close that and we can see that we've moved from the 7F machine to the 8F machine. Well, you'll have to agree that partition mobility was simple to do and quick. We always get asked, well, how long would a larger partition take to move across? Because we only demonstrated a one gigabyte memory partition. Well, that all depends on your network. If you're using a one gigabit network as we are here, then we can do, roughly speaking, 100 megabytes a second memory move between the machines. Perhaps a little bit less than that if you have other traffic on your network. So you can use that rule of thumb of how long it takes to move the memory between the two machines as a good way of measuring how long it would take a larger partition to move between the two machines. Of course, when we're actually doing this, the partition is still running. The actual outage of the machine is a tiny, tiny fraction of a second.